So I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for a video today. None of my uh, regular projects are anywhere close to having a full video on, uh, waiting on some parts, things like that. So I figured I would uh, dig through the literature collection, don't talk about it much. Um, so this particular book in front of you uh, covers from late 56 through 1957. Um, these are dealer bulletins that were put out by the John Deere Plow Company uh, from the Syracuse, New York branch. Uh, there's a lot of uh, John Deere 440, 420 uh, material. Uh, what I've done is I've flipped through the book and I've you see little tabs here. I've highlighted some, some things that I think uh, everybody would probably find a little interesting. Now this is not my normal video um, where I, I mean, I'm just going to kind of learn along with you. Um, I bought this book in uh, November of 2016. A lot of people ask where I get my material from, uh, all of my information. I get it from a lot of different sources, auctions, personal communications, things like that. Um, these particular things I don't necessarily think are all that valuable monetarily speaking, uh, but I really enjoy reading them. Uh, this book itself is in a Rome heavy duty disc plowing harrows uh, from the Rome Plow Company um, in Cedartown, Georgia, USA. Never heard of it, but that's what the book, what I do is when I buy stuff like this, it stays in the book, it came in, I don't try to organize it in any other shape or form. So let's see what this book's got in it. Now, of course, the big question is how something from Georgia ended up with a bunch of stuff from Syracuse, New York. But anyway, so for toy collectors, um, order John Deere toys early for the holidays. Uh, we're pleased to announce that we have a new style miniature John Deere. A wheel type tractor with three point hitch and a good supply of these will be in stock at Syracuse and our sub branches take care for your uh, to take care of your holiday requirements. Um, and so basically, um, now this is uh, by the dozen, I believe. Miniature wheel tractor three point hitch, eighteen dollars and fifty cents a dozen. Um, and then up here are some some tra the tractor cycle twenty three. So I guess this was like a uh, like a kid's tractor cycle two-wheel trailer was five dollars but a dozen of the miniature wheel tractors was eighteen dollars and fifty cents and this is what they look like I can't really tell exactly what it is when you look at the, the bulletin there but that was the toy and then obviously you could get everything else uh, crawlers cord pickers spreaders hmm, I'm tired Loader, disc harrow, plow, farm wagon, combine, baler, so on and so forth. So, kind of cool there. Up next are in our tra uh, trail through this binder. Um, kind of funny, uh, John Deere Souvenirs. This is December 10th, 1956. Uh, new John Deere Souvenirs. Please announce three new items. Tie clasp, cuff links, and spring tie. Um, now, they were av available... Uh, the complete set for four dollars and sixty eight cents, the tie clasp only for a buck seventy one, and the spring tie for a dollar twenty five. Can't tell you how much I would love to have a couple of these for those prices. Um, I certainly would love the tie clip uh, by itself, but not that I ever wear a tie, but you know, kind of still cool to have. But I thought that was kind of interesting. Up next. Um, Figure we'll talk a little bit about marketing. Uh, piston ring uh, competition. This was in February 4th, 1957. Piston ring sold to dealers and John Deere tractor owners by competitive people cost uh, us a considerable volume of parts business. Uh, this it has been going on for years and will no doubt continue unless we increase our efforts to convince, convince dealers genuine John Deere piston rings outperform all other piston rings in John Deere tractors. Now, you can go on and read the rest of that. Obviously, there's quite a bit of marketing in there. And another binder, um, now this would cover the new generation. I've got some data uh, from a Deere engineer where they actually uh, looked at piston rings, uh, particularly in the, the 10 series of the new generation tractors. So Deere did quite a bit of, of research on their piston rings and things like that. So I thought this was kind of cool and worth mentioning. Um up next is the new value checked calling card. Sorry, I missed you. I'll be stopping again soon. Uh, now have available uh, new doorknob calling cards, uh, which 
I have a couple of those, but I just thought that was, I don't have any, I thought there was one attached to this, but I'm not. Oftentimes when you got things like this, um, the dealer's got things like this that came with an example, and I've got one a little bit farther back in the book. And then there's this one, the shovel and sweep display, and I think that's just a sweet, absolutely fantastic uh, display of shovels and sweeps. Certainly love to have one, and the, probably the funniest part is cost for this well-constructed unit is extremely low. It's $6 per unit. And now if you wanted to buy one of these just, just by itself, it would probably be 500 to to 1000 bucks in really good condition. That's just a guess on my part. I've actually never seen one like that sell. I've seen a lot of them with the masonite boards uh, up top sell, but the masonite boards typically sell for $300 or so, you know, 200 to 400 bucks, somewhere around 300 on average. But yeah, six bucks, love to see that for six bucks. This is probably my favorite part of this entire binder. Um, in uh, April 3rd, 1957, uh, attached are the four new ad proofs, uh, which will help you tell the story of the six. Oops, I got this little too far on there. Will help you tell the story of the six new power and economy records established by John Deere Tractors and official Nebraska test. You can order your ad mats on these postcards. Um, and here are the ad mats. If I can get all this to fold right. So choose a John Deere diesel, and at which point we have the picture of the 820. You have the dealer's name. I have a bunch of these ad mats. Um, let me see if I can prop this up a little bit better. I have a bunch of these ad mats I might have to get into later. Um, and these are actually, these should come out. Here, I'll just set these over here. So you've got your ad mats there. Uh, and there's the 720, or no, there's the 720 and then the 520 LP gas. Uh, the 520, 620. 720 diesel and then there was here's the ordering card and you could order which mat you want to provide the newspaper or whatnot uh, and then the date codes 5 of 56 so kind of a cool little piece I, I at least I think it was a cool little piece um, deer actually had hundreds of these um, around uh, and over the years I've collected some uh, really cool I think to see those dealer ads. All right, up next on the list. Money folds. Uh, attached as a photograph is new style leather money folds that have added to our line of souvenirs, which are available for distribution. Sorry, this thing's trying to fold up on me because there's some harder stuff in the back that just doesn't work quite right. But if you look, not too far. There are the money folds. I think those are kind of cool. Um, particularly the one uh, with the bulldozer on it right there. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. Hopefully this video is okay. Um, but this is kind of cool to see things like that. Um, and there's also things like uh, the uniforms and stuff. All of these swatches of fabric are, are coming off, so i got to be really careful when I put this stuff away uh, to pay attention to it. Probably one of the coolest things in this entire book um, is the plow hitch calculator which I can't remember. Yeah, unfortunately it is stapled to that one right there, but that is, there's a plow hitch calculator um, for the for the plows. I really think that that's a nifty item and it shows you how to order it, but basically if we can see in there, uh, we're attaching a plow hitch calculator for tractor drawn plows, which can be utilized by you to good advantage in selling your drawn plowers, plows to owners of older model John Deere tractors. We have a limited supply of these on hand for no charge basis and they'll be furnished on a first come first serve method. So um, kind of cool to see things like that. And let's continue on back in our story here. This one's kind of cool. Uh, I don't know a whole lot about plows. Um, I'm slowly, very slowly learning. But this was the announcement of the, I guess, the triple number plows, the 666, 777, um, uh, the, the four, five, and six bottom plows, 14 and 16 inches. Um, but wide customer acceptance of our 555H, three bottom tractor truss, drawn truss frame plow equipped with the safety trip standards. Um, and then, so then uh, that was added in February 1956. Um, and it said, 
these new plows will be known as the 666H Trustron Moldboard Plow with safety trip standards in the 777. They'll be available in 14 and 16 inch sizes. And it goes on to talk about fuel performance over here. And uh, the 777 uh, would be available for shipment or on or, on or about June 15th, 1957. So kind of cool to date some stuff that way. And there's a lot of parts prices in here. Parts um, announcing the model 620 uh, Grove and Orchard tractor. Kind of a cool little video. Or well, video. This is definitely not a video. Uh, basically announced how um, the Waterloo line of model 620 Grove and Orchard tractor, new tractor coming off the production line. Uh, this was June 5th, 1957. It'll be powered uh, by the same engine as the 620 uh, row crop, and uh, power steering will be offered as optional goes through all the shielding and whatnot so kind of cool and then it talks about um, all of the options and how you, the order codes and whatnot so kind of cool and then almost to the end here hopefully this isn't too long of a video and it's not really all that boring I've been hesitant to do one of these because you know I don't know how many people find this interesting I find this piece pretty interesting uh, one man hay baling system. Uh, we've reproduced, uh, attached a copy of the John Deere Company news release on the John Deere one man hay baling system. Uh, a copy of this news release and its accompanying three photos were mailed June 11th to the editors of 93 farm publications. So hopefully you've seen some of this, maybe. Uh, so here's the news release. It talks about it talks about the revolutionary new system for baling and storing hay crops. One man now one man alone can actually bale and store his own hay. Um, and so it goes through the little news article there, and unfortunately, oh no, I have all three pictures. So the three pictures. Uh, John Deere bale ejector for the uh, twine tie balers tosses the bales in the high sided wagon. Uh, the baled hay, the elevator uh, equips, basically, yeah, the elevator and the bale conveyor make short work of storing it. So, here we go. So, in this particular case, let me turn the camera around here. So, you've got the 620 up here. You have the baler. I have no earthly idea what baler that is. I would assume it's a baler from 1957. And you've got the, the kicker, which throws it into the hay trailer. The next picture is, I guess, the elevator taking the bales up, and I'm missing, so yeah, I'm missing the other picture. That's why I thought I, knew, I thought I was missing a picture. And you know, so you have Farm Safety Week posters, and then another one of my favorites, just because a lot of these are really popular with folks, uh, counter display carton for the uh, tire pumps. So these are the tire pumps that you put on the 540 PTO. Um, and so this was a counter display announcing it in June 17th, 1957. But uh, that's it for uh, this video. Um, like I said, I really enjoy reading this kind of stuff. I don't know if anybody else does, but that is uh, just something I want to talk about. So thanks for watching.